Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest on Storm Lillian that is going to be arriving for many through Friday has only been named as a storm earlier through Thursday uh, so pretty short notice from the Met Office but we do have quite widespread yellow warnings for rain and wind across northern areas as we are going to see widespread heavy rain widely strong winds and potentially some exceptionally strong winds in a very small area around the center of the low where we can see a lot of squally rain and as I said, really high wind gusts. It's not widespread, as I said, with those exceptionally strong wind gusts, but could be 70, 80 miles per hour in a few spots. Now we'll run through the latest from the live radar, recording this through the evening. So that center of Storm Lillian is about 12 hours away from when I'm recording this. Have a look at those various weather warnings. So we'll have a look at the UKV and the Arpege looking at the wind gusts and precipitation. Again, we're not going to focus on the longer range today as I do want to have a look at Storm Lillian in detail. I don't want the video to drag on for too long, but we'll have a look at that in more detail in tomorrow's video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see the weather fronts associated with Storm Lillian are moving in at the moment. Quite a lot of heavy rain, initially further north and westwards, but it will transition further eastwards through Friday into Saturday morning. Now, at the moment, we've not got any exceptionally strong winds out there, but it's towards that western portion, towards the Republic of Ireland, where the centre of that low is really starting to spin up. It's not too visible here yet on the live radar, but in the next few hours from recording this, which is around 11pm, it will start to form and it's along that centre of the low pressure system of Storm Lillian, where we're going to see those exceptionally strong winds. Now, at the moment, the temperatures aren't particularly warm. Uh, it's a bit more mild in the south and the east, but further north, it's much more autumnal. And we are able to put on the average wind speeds as well. Uh, again, these are not the wind gusts, but the wind speeds. You can see it's nothing too exceptional, but you can see it is moving in from that southwest corner, and it will be picking up quite substantially over the next 6 to 12 hours. Now, if you do have a look at the weather warnings for Lillian, we do have rain warnings issued at the moment, and they go on until 9am on Friday for southern Scotland and eastern Scotland. Quite isolated areas, again, most likely from relief rainfall, where we do see higher rainfall totals over higher ground, and generally uh, in areas where we could see some really hefty bursts moving through. 20 to 30 millimetres, widely expected, so about an inch of rain, maybe 40 to 50 millimetres uh, over the course of the full period uh, through into Friday. Now, to Friday, we still have those rain warnings issued, but we do have a more widespread yellow wind warning issued covering parts of southern Scotland, but mostly northern England and the far north of Wales from 5 a.m. until 11 a.m. So, only a short window, but it's for very strong winds, which may, which may lead to disruption to travel and infrastructure on Friday morning. Now, if you have watched the last few videos, I have been highlighting this quite significantly. I did say I was guaranteed a yellow warning would be issued, and we've seen it issued this morning, also with a named storm status, which I didn't actually expect, if I'm being completely honest. Now, again, it's a little bit of a, a teething issue I sometimes have with these Met Office warnings, is the fact is that they're meant to be warnings. They're meant to tell you in advance when something might happen. Whereas this warning uh, is, is not the worst warning I've ever seen in terms of its time frame, but it's about 12 to 24 hours before the effects start to come in. Uh, and this was actually put into force. Um, this was issued sorry, at 10 a.m. on Thursday morning for 5 a.m. on Friday morning. So about a 19 hour window from the, from the warning being issued and the start of uh, of the event now for something like thunderstorms or snow where very small differences can make a substantial difference in the ground effects sometimes i can see why warnings are very very short notice but it's something like this which we've been seeing in the models for a good two or three days if you've seen the videos we've been highlighting the risk of exceptionally strong winds not only did we have no warnings issued until this morning, but we didn't have, uh, and it was also not even named until this morning. So again, it's sometimes a little bit counterintuitive in my eyes that we have these warnings. They're meant to warn people of impacts, uh, giving at least some sort of decent notice. And we sometimes only see them a couple of hours ahead. This one about 19 hours ahead. So it doesn't give a lot of time to prepare, especially something like this, where it's very strong winds. 
People may need to tie furniture down, especially being during the middle of the summer. Uh, it doesn't give a lot of notice. Uh, and there are plenty of people out there, no fault of their own, who, again, look at the forecast, look at uh, what's going to be going on, but really will take notice when warnings or names are used. That's the purpose. Uh, and unfortunately, in this case, again, a little bit late, in my opinion, considering this was in the model output a number of days ago. But if we do look at the further details, 50 to 60 miles per hour, widely in this region, maybe 65 to 75, and maybe up to 80 miles per hour. And again, these could affect major routes as the M6, A66, and the A1M, as, uh, as well as potentially impacting infrastructure. Some very heavy rainfall around as well. You can see medium impact and low light, not far away from an amber warning, in fact, which I said there was a possibility of being put into place. So again, Frustrating. This was not put in, in advance even 12 to 24 hours uh, further back on Wednesday, for example, uh, when it did look pretty clear that this was coming. But regardless, if we do have a look at the actual model output, if we start on the latest UKV, we'll run through all the various normal charts here, and then we'll also have a look at the Arpege as well, another model just to cross-examine those top wind speeds. Now, as we head into Friday, you can see, uh, as I'm recording this, we're not expecting to see a massive hook yet, but it's as we head through the early hours of Friday, that hook really forms across the Irish Sea towards the Isle of Man. We can see that really dark red, and it's within that centre of the low we could see the exceptionally strong winds. As we head through Friday in towards Saturday, it looks a lot better, things clear, but then we do start to see some more heavy rain associated with the general stormy weather we have at the moment in the south and the east. So it could be a pretty wet Saturday morning in that southern and eastern quadrant, and then slowly into Saturday through into Sunday. We see on and off rain, but plenty of dry conditions. Into next week, another area of low pressure moves in, but you see it starts to lose its intensity. And this is because we start to see high pressure building in from the south, and we start to see hot air heading our way as well. All indications that heat, and maybe even a heat wave, as we have alluded to in the past couple of videos, could be coming for the end of August. But again, we'll look at that in more detail in tomorrow's video. If you look at the wind gusts here, again, we'll focus on Friday morning. You can see overnight uh, through into Friday morning, strong winds, 50 to 60 miles per hour quite widely, and then it really picks up around the 5, 6, 7 a.m. point, around the 60 to 70 miles per hour. Locally, could get up towards 80 or even maybe a 90. You can see it intensifies significantly out into the North Sea. And again, because of the small scale and rapid deepening of this system, there's a possibility that this deepening happens slightly earlier. And if it happens a couple of hours earlier over land, then the winds might not be 60 or 70. They could be more like 80 or 90. So again, a little bit of now casting having to go on here. But across that quadrant where we have got the like, yellow warning, the yellow warning looks very accurate from the looks of this uh, of the UKV here in terms of positioning. In that yellow warning, it looks like there's going to be very strong winds, uh, but still a bit of uncertainty whether it's going to be 60, 70, or maybe even 80, or maybe even locally on higher ground, up towards 90. We'll have to wait and see. But the rest of Friday into the weekend, blustery at times, but nothing too exceptional. If you look at the max temperatures now, into Friday, maybe a 22 or 23 in the east, so actually not too bad. As we head into Saturday, again, not terrible um, in terms of sunshine, but temperatures not great. High teens, so really the first kind of poor day we've had in a while in terms of temperatures. And this is not even due to widespread significant rainfall. There is rain in the morning in the south and the east, but really by the afternoon, it doesn't look too bad. It's just we're in fresher air and yeah, pretty poor conditions. Into Sunday, starts to recover, maybe touching 20. Monday, starting to recover a little bit more, 22, 23. And into Tuesday, recovering significantly up towards 25 or 26. And this could be uh, the start of the rise towards those hotter conditions later next week. Now, if you finally compare to the Arpege, we'll really have a look at those wind gusts. You can see as we head into Friday morning, very strong winds widely, 50, 60 miles per hour, peaking at maybe 70, 75, maybe locally 80. And you see the strongest winds here from the Arpege are actually over land. So UKV intensified, it's got down to the North Sea. Here, it's slightly slower in moving through and it's more intense across northern England. So again, 
have to keep a very close eye on this through the morning. Uh, again, winds are very difficult to predict. Rainfall, you can look at the live radar. Winds, really, the only best predictor is to look at the pressure uh, and to look at the latest wind gusts, and that's not really readily available for anyone who just wants to you know, head out or, or have any plans. So it is really going to be a matter of judgment. All we can say is there is uncertainty about how strong the winds will be, but they do look very strong, abnormally strong for this time of year. Hence, the system has been named with only yellow warnings put in force. So if I look at all the runs today, it does look pretty strong. Lillian it could be pretty severe in a few areas, but if you are to the south and the north of this system, it's mainly going to be heavy rain in the north. Further south, it's not much at all, really. A bit of blustery winds, maybe 50 mile per hour winds, but nothing too exceptional. It's actually not too terrible. It's really that Northern England point getting kind of the perfect storm scenario with very strong gusty winds and that heavy rain. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you stay safe over the next couple of days and I'll see you again for another video soon.